I feel like everybody picked up a new hobby during the quarantine slash COVID situation in 2020. For me and my friends, we started playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons on a regular basis, which is super fun. I have to admit, I kind of suck at like character building or world building, but there is one thing I'm good at, and that is writing music. I think. So let's talk about what it's like to write music for a Dungeons & Dragons campaign, some of the pitfalls and some of the things you should really think about when you're composing each track. Personally speaking, I like to compartmentalize things. So I usually find there's like three kind of archetypes of uh, music that you want to write for a D&D campaign. And those are number one, kind of like an action battle theme. Number two, a kind of like a more ambient, um, general kind of world theme. And number three, a theme that is specific to a character or a mood in that sense. So I tend to find that the action theme kind of archetype uh, actually gives you the most space to explore with big um, melodic themes. And the reason for that is, contrary to what you might think at first, is that actually I find there's a lot of kind of like dead air in action sequences in D&D because you have a lot of people who are like hum and haw and like really think about what their character is going to do next. Um, so there can be some gaps in the dialogue to let the melody really shine through. So when I'm doing battle music, I usually like to start with a kind of a bass line in mind uh, and then kind of build some chords on top of that. I think we have a bass line, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, so I'm going to do some arrangements, so I'm going to start with just a lower part of this and then bring in the rest of the bass line. I'm going to ratchet up the tension a little bit um, on the second passing of this with some higher cello. Pretty much fully realized baseline. Um, we're probably going to change it a little bit, add some variations so that we can have some proper high E string chords on top. So let's see what that sounds like. I just kind of freestyled that, to be honest. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so I actually think we can fit in a little solo violin on top of all these chords. I know it's a lot, sonically speaking, and it's a big change, but I think it works. So obviously I would kind of build it out even more from here with like a B section, but just to keep it really simple, my three elements for a battle track are a bang and bass line, uh, some higher up chords in the middle, and you can put a solo violin or a violin's one section on top of it for the melody. So if you're writing ambient or like world music, um, you really want to keep the melody as simple uh, and unnoticeable as possible, and that is for two main reasons. First of all, consider that this is kind of like a dialogue scene in a film or TV series, and that people will be talking pretty much throughout all of this music. So you really want it to be able to sit in the background and not draw too much like attention to itself. And secondly, at least in the campaigns that I've played, these tend to be like the most prolonged um, sequences. So you need to think about if you're writing a short piece of music and it has a very memorable melody in it, it's going to be looped and looped and looped over and over again um, to the point where the melody might become kind of stale and kind of repetitive and overused. Um, and so you can avoid that totally by just not emphasizing the melody. All right, so I'm just going to start it off with some um, kind of ensemble strings, sordino sustains. Basically, the idea behind the campaign is to have it kind of be like in the aftermath of this big natural disaster. So I want the music to be kind of somber um, to reflect that.
So what I have next is this kind of three violins legato patch. Uh, really interesting. So I'm going to put like a bunch of this uh, long Valhalla Shimmer Reaver onto it. And because this is like a legato scripted library, like it's meant to be played like a solo violin almost, uh, if I just like play a bunch of random notes, it'll get really confused, but it'll sound really interesting. yeah the melody kind of doesn't go anywhere um but that can be okay because like i said this is really going to be like background music let's talk about character themes and this will be really meaningful and a really nice memento for your fellow players to remember the campaign and their character by i often find it's quite difficult to just start a song with a blank slate as well so if you talk to somebody and they know what music they want their character to have and that can be like a really great starting point uh, when you're composing music so to give you a practical example uh, i'm going to talk about a piece that i recently did for one of my co-players in my DD campaign he's basically going to play this kind of druid character so he asked me for music that was energetic uh, kind of epic uh, and that also included birdsong uh, in some capacity I did find it kind of difficult to uh, include the bird song as like a melodic part of the music, um, but I did also get to use some kind of like cool um, eclectic woodwind instruments to kind of give a sense of wildness. So take a look and let me know if you agree. All right, so ultimately he wants bird song, so I'm gonna get some very royalty free bird song from freesound.org. So as per the usual, I'm gonna start with the bass. Okay, we're gonna turn the long form bird audio into kind of like a background um, ambiance thing. I feel like we want some really weird wind instruments to kind of fill this out. I know exactly where to find them, in the contact factory library. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna flesh out the string part a little bit in a moment, but first I wanna do some sort of a melody above it to give a kind of a sense of like holy shit, what's going on. And that is pretty much our character. Oh, I'm way off. I am way off. 
So I hope this has given you an insight onto how I personally uh, compose D&D music. My goodness. Goes without saying that um, this is all like totally subjective. What works for me uh, may not work for you, so I encourage you to go out there, write some music and find a workflow that works for you. But nevertheless, I hope this was somehow inspiring. Uh, and if you enjoyed the video, yeah, I know what to do. Also, I know like every YouTuber says this, but I literally had like 99.7% of viewers not subscribed to my last video. So please, please, it would mean the world. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye.